Hey uh, folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play RimWorld No Mods. No expansions. This is our vanilla run of RimWorld. We're up to six lovely people over here. Things have been developing kind of nicely. Uh, working on assembling our little bit of a kill box, which uh, we are still going to be talking about. Various ideas and things like that. Do not take, uh, if you are new to RimWorld, don't take this as a, like a god tier kill box or anything like that. We'll just be talking about some of the concepts. And there's some things that you can iterate on, although it will be probably very functional. It is really funny to me to see these blue sandbags here. Not used to seeing that. Usually I'm making sandbags out of cloth, but we had the bird skin, so what the heck. And if I recall correctly, we didn't have a large number of birds, bird skins, so it was like, we'll just use it for that because it's not enough for clothing. That's been a little bit since I was able to record. I wish I could uh, keep pumping these out regularly, but there are tons of things are interrupting in real life, uh, making the flow of content a little bit tricksy. So sorry about that, but... Uh, there we go. We'll still do what we can. Just notice we had a little bit of a marble urn over here. These urns tend to have pretty good beauty. Look at that. Beauty of eight. So yeah, let's install those. We'll just move those inside of... Uh, we could put them inside the rec room. Or we could add the beauty to our little manufacturing area over here. I guess a lot of people are going to pass through here one way or another. Let's add an urn uh, right over here. I don't think we're really going to use the space too much. We shall see. A little bit of hunting happening, I think. I can't remember what we have flagged here. Lots of donkeys going. Uh, in terms of food, we've got a bunch of food sitting around right now, which is great. Our nutrition level seem okay. We've got 40 components, which is nice to see. Good amount of steel as well, actually. Yep. I can't remember. Am I building these out of wood? Okay, no, we are starting to build things out of limestone. Great. I do want to replace more walls in here with limestone as... Whoa. I was going to say, I do want to replace more walls in here with stone so that the risk of fire is reduced. Although the fact that we have stone floors is already helping a lot. So, Warg is hunting Sky. Yeah, right over here. Where is Sky? Okay, well, Sky will be safe once she gets through that door. Although the Warg will start to hunt something else. So that's one of the things with the setup over here. Currently, animals can get into our base. Although, once we get this sealed off, I think the traps might tend to trigger and stop things from wandering in here. But yeah, any meat eater that gets too hungry will, I guess we don't actually get the stats on something we don't have um, domesticated, will occasionally, well, not any meat eater. Um, there's an actual tag uh, right here. This symbol here, predator, when hungry, will hunt smaller creatures, including possibly people. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what the warg does now. The warg's in an animal pen. Kind of expecting it to go after Oh, it might be hunting her outside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit everyone, draft everyone, and just bring them back in here. So if the warg's still hunting Sky, it may turn around again, and it did. But what we're going to do... There we go. Did that. Warg Revenge, because it was injured, which will flag it as being hostile, so everyone now will start auto-targeting it. I can't remember. Is honey, honey's a pacifist, right? Yeah. Well, let's have... There we go. Uh, do that, and we'll ask that someone um, hunts it to sort of finish off that warg as a way to do it. So, Darcy, I reset you. There you go. You're going to finish off this warg here. Take care of that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, really nervous about those. Sometimes I like to preemptively hunt anything that's a predator. Although the thing is, wargs, yeah, they have 100% uh, revenge chance if they get injured. So you have to be really sure that you're going to be killing them if you're going to do that. Am I smoothing this? Why am I smoothing this? Oh, because I was thinking about running a backup power cable through here. That's right. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, hopefully we can get more of this finished before the next raid. I'm wondering if I should rename people based on their roles. I do. I guess we've got Fob, Fob the Builder. That still kind of works pretty well. This is, what's funny about Sky is she mostly works in the earth because she's a miner and a hauler. Because I do that sometimes when, when things um, get big. When I'm playing on my own, I tend to do that. I tend to give people really boring names. Literally, builder, planter, crafter. Uh, <laughs> in my, some of my Let's Plays, I've tried to be a little bit more creative and come up with nicknames that indicate the role, but are still sort of realistic nicknames. But yeah, I might do that, because it might help me keep track of, uh, 
of some things. But let's let's leave it be for now and see what happens. All right, honey coming out and chopping down some trees is really good. Um, yeah, so honey is our, right. You are a plant worker, but you don't actually have passion for it. We don't have anyone with that passion. And really what you're gonna do is you're probably gonna become a crafter later. Now, Paul, Paolo does have double passion for crafting stuff, but Paolo can cook, so he's kind of be stuck on that unless we get someone else. Oh, we get a group coming to visit. Now, this is not a caravan. They do have the ability, um, they do have some few a few items to trade, but it's not gonna be a major trading opportunity. Still, it's probably worth going and sending Honey out to have a chat and wait for them to get a little closer. Now, under miscellaneous, we do have a few of these little spots we can put down, which are very handy. Um, I'm kind of spoiled in that one of the mods I tend to use adds a uh, trading spot, and that will encourage these trade caravans to go to a particular area. Otherwise, um, they pick something close to your base, but you know, it can be a few different spots. And I like them to be as close as possible, so when we trade, we don't have to work as hard to haul, but anyway. Let's sell a bunch of these weapons. In fact, I think I'll probably sell all the melee weapons because we don't have any brawlers and we're not running any mods that let us use multiple weapons. So we can get rid of those. The poor cloth jackets. Do that. I mean, the fact that no one's wearing these means that no one needs, like no one needs a duster right now. Oh, wait, hold on. You don't have any money. Is there anything I can buy from you? I could buy pemmican or that. No, okay. So let me back up here. Um, we'll tell you what. There we go. I'll do this. The other thing we can consider is gifting them some things. So I'm going to do this and take all their silver because that's pretty useful. It might be worth gifting them some stuff. So if we go into this gift mode. So the advantage of gifting things is, is kind of twofold. One, it does, it is a way for you to eliminate some wealth from your colony. Like some of this clothing here is just sitting around and it's not really making our colony better, but it's contributing to wealth, which increases the size of the attacks. So getting rid of it can be a thing. In fact, what some people do, um, not so much in this situation, but if you set up a, um, a cremator for your corpses, you can also cremate like weapons and clothing items you can burn them up uh yeah so apparel and weapons and so a lot of them will will burn things that aren't useful it's just an effort to keep down first of all the clutter in your storage but also your overall wealth levels but what we can also do is just give things away to our neighbors here and that will give us some faction rep so you can see here by giving them these uh, poor plain leather pants we'll get one rep just from that uh, and we could consider doing a little bit more there we go. Let's do this. We're going to get 10 reputation by offering them these gifts. Okay. So they went from 1 to 11. Now that's not much, but if you do get your reputation with a faction, I can't remember where the break point is. There we go. I was going to say, I think it's 75 and it is. So if we can get them above 75, they'll be allied. Um, and you don't need to keep them above 75. Uh, I don't, I think they'll stay allied. I actually don't know when the break point is, other than minus 75 becoming hostile. When you've got someone who's allied with you, there's a few interesting options that open up um, if you get a communication console. Um, there's lots of things you can do with the comms console, but one of the things you can do with allied factions is you can call them in to help you if you're being attacked and various things like that. And that's one of the mechanics I don't use very much, and I really should. Having these allied groups is actually incredibly useful. And I need to make an effort to do that. So maybe we'll do that this time around. All right. We do get the message about the warm clothing. I forgot about that. We are in the winter and right now is okay. Um, if I recall correctly, like with the dusters and some hats, we're, we're not bad. Although we're using helmets and I don't believe the helmets are actually giving us any temperature. We get a slight insulation against cold, but it's effectively zero here, which is unfortunate. All right. We're up to, are we up to producing flak helmets? Is that why we've got the simple helmets to sell? Yeah. No, flak helmets, I mean, they're not cheap to build. <clears throat> but they're not bad. Maybe I didn't want to sell the simple helmets because we don't actually have the means to uh, maintain that all the time. I'm not sure. Now, we did get a quest last time to go and sell four dusters um, for a big reward. And there were some really nice rewards on there, but... And I need to go and be a little bit more active with more quests, but I really want to get this up. I didn't want to take too much of our 
production away to build dusters just for a trade job because that seemed it seemed a little risky right now i'm gonna feel so much better when this is set up yeah for sure okay visitors are leaving having visitors on the map can be quite useful as well if you get attacked they might get drawn into the fight now if they die you do get reputation penalties but oh something got killed on the trap there oh bunny oh poor little bunny still it's more meat and yeah, this this will help deal with uh, animals walking to our base since this door is open. Now, I just noticed there is a tree there and you can see every time someone tries to go through this door, they get slowed down. What I often like to do with the doors, just like I did here, is put a little flooring um, across it. Now, you can do the wood floors because wood is cheap. Concrete is also cheap because it's only one steel per. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use concrete. We'll do one of those just to prevent any um, trees from growing on either side of this door and slowing things down. We're going to have to figure out maybe something standard with their floors to make everything look pretty and proper soon. But yeah, wood's kind of infinite, especially on this map, and steel isn't. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm not too worried about the fire spread over here, so let's just use a little bit of wood for now. Um, and this tree here, which actually just grew a little bit bigger. Or, I think it was it was a tinier tree a second ago, wasn't it? Maybe I just imagined it. Anyway, we'll uh, put a little chop command there for honey. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, one of the things I've noticed is your pawns here with these gates, they do tend to, um, they don't really use the gates too often. It does slow it down. I guess I don't really need this. I can't remember what this was originally put up for. To keep some critters out, or maybe this was part of my original pen kind of construction. I think it's, I think we should just remove this. Now, when you use the deconstruct tool, if you use it over a tile that just has uh, uh, power cables it will deconstruct those um but if there's another construction on top it'll deconstruct that construction so the wooden fence gate here is being deconstructed but the power conduit isn't but it can be a little tricksy sometimes did we not have 40 components a second ago oh we're st we built our our turrets over here okay i will feel very safe with those in place but yeah they do use a fair amount of materials and then when they break down they use components more often as well uh they also use a relatively decent amount of power now what we could do is build a switch and that might not be a terrible idea if i don't want to expand my power situation too much i'm gonna build a power switch i guess i'll just put it down there now, what material you use? I don't tend to build a lot of power switches. Still uses a component. Hopefully, you don't get a breakdown on those. So, we just tore apart the cable there. So, these are all off. Now, you can toggle the power on and off on the steel turrets. And if you watch some really old RimWorld videos, that was a way to, like, stop these turrets from consuming power. Because it would, they would turn on and off instantly. However, now that's not the case. As of for a long time now, someone, one of your pawns actually has to go over there and flick it. Which, A, takes time to respond. And, B, if there's enemies about, you don't really want these to not be on instantly. You don't want a pawn to, like, walk into a danger zone or anything like that. Um, so, uh, you don't generally want to use the power on and off right here. I think I was pointing at allow, but it's the designated power on and off over here. But with the switch, it still takes a pawn to walk over there and do it, but it's only one switch and we can do it from the safety of our base. So I think that's going to be okay. New quest. Oh, I kind of like these. Yeah, these are pretty nice and easy missions to do. Um, it's not so much that I care about having peace with this, this faction necessarily. Um, because here's the thing, the faction, um, that we're going to be having a chat with, I think it, I think it was the Andonistia over here. Um, they have a natural goodwill of negative 130. That's just the way it is. So over time, things will drift back to neutral over there. So even if we manage to make them friends, unless we keep doing things to boost our friendship, um, they will drift back to hostile. And the way this game works is this won't necessarily reduce the amount of bad things that happen. In RimWorld, what the storyteller roles that a sort of a major bad event should happen, like a raid should happen, for example. And then what it does is it looks at all the factions that could raid you and picks one of those. If we were to make friends with all of the humanoid factions, right? If, uh, if we could make friends with everyone here, and we can't with, like, the pirate crew is permanently hostile, as well as the savage tribe over here, they are permanently hostile. Um... But if we could make friends with all of these, then every raid, I believe, would be a mechanoid raid. So it doesn't reduce the amount of attacks you do. It just sort of shifts the things. 
However, I do like doing these missions, generally speaking, because you get a bunch of social experience. So if we send Honey out to do that, now she won't be around, which means we won't have a grower active. We could temporarily turn on growing for maybe Sky, for example. And I think that's what I'll do. Um, but yeah, she will come back with a bunch of social experience, which Honey's pretty highly school skilled on social. So I think you get like 6,000 XP, which is a fair amount, but I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make for her anymore. I won't even give her another level. Ah, I mean, she'll get the, I think she'll get the 50% more, I think. So I think she'll get 9,000 out of it. And it said it could give gifts. So we'll, we'll send Honey out there and see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to form a caravan from Vanilliton. We're going to say you're going over here. Wow, it's not that far away, but I guess not being on a road, it's not the fastest. Um, it, You know, we really should tame it. Oh, I can't remember if the donkeys are tameable. Or, sorry, I don't remember if the donkeys are rideable. I was saying we should tame a donkey. I, can't, I don't know if you can ride them. You can certainly use them as pack animals. But yeah, we'll send Honey out there. I don't think we need to send a pack animal for her because she's not going to be carrying much. The automatically selected thing is going to bring some fine meals. Um, I'm kind of tempted to send a couple of survival meals as well. Just, oh, right. Just to make sure you've got enough food. You're going to bring one bedroll, a little bit of medicine just in case. Although, honestly, if you get attacked, you're kind of going to be screwed. So part of me is thinking, don't bother with the medicine. All right. Well, let's see what happens. So yeah, we'll send Honey out there. And yes, in the meantime, and I'll try to remember to disable this later, we'll put Sky on a little bit of growing and plant cutting duty. She's only got a skill of three, but it'll make sure that if anything does need to be tended, it'll still happen. Not to mention chop down these trees. Okay, research finished gas operation. So I think I've talked about like the weapon choice before. Um. And I've, I've talked about how heavy SMGs are really decent weapons. So my, okay, my preferred weapon, in, well, I suppose in a perfect world, my preferred weapon would be the, like, laser blasters and stuff like that. But um, in terms of, you know, slightly more affordable, I really like assault rifles, okay? So if we look at assault rifles, they do 11 damage per bullet in a three-round burst, if we take a look at the heavy SMG, they do 12 damage per bullet in a three round burst. The heavy SMG fire rate is 327 and the assault rifle is 360. So the assault rifle, the bullets technically do a little tiny bit less damage, but they technically fire a little bit faster. So in my head, uh, an assault rifle and a heavy SMG do the same damage. Let's just pretend that they do the same damage. The big difference is the range. The assault rifle has the base range of 31 over here, whereas the heavy SMG has a base range of 23. Perhaps more importantly, the heavy SMGs here have a big accuracy fall off. So they're pretty good within 12 cells, okay? But then after that, their accuracy drops dramatically. Um... I guess because of the range 23, like this one here is at 25 range. So that's part of it. So um, I, I don't actually know exactly how this is calculated in between things necessarily for the, the 23 range. But so 12 cells, we've got an accuracy of 65. Whereas if we look at the assault rifle here, um, it's actually not very good at super short range. But honestly, we don't really want to be short shooting that close anyway. Within 12 cells, it's 70%. Within... 25 cells, it's 65%. So 12 versus 12 cells versus 25 cells. Same accuracy here. And at long range, 40 or more, which again, we've got the range, the maximum range is actually 31, but still has a pretty decent accuracy. So the assault rifles are much more accurate um, in most situations and can hit things further away. Six extra tiles, right? Because I think it's 25 versus 31. Six extra tiles away, and the assault rifle actually can hit things at those range, whereas the heavy SMG can't. The big difference, though, is that, first of all, we need a whole other level of tech for precision rifling, but also the assault rifle is considerably more expensive to build. Oh, the uh, precision rifling also needs a high-tech research bench before we can research it. 1400 tech's not that expensive, but yeah, we need the, oops, we need the high-tech research bench. And I believe the big difference, and I can't see it right on this screen. Yeah, we can't see the build cost over here. Um, but I believe the assault rifle needs six components versus two components for the heavy SMG. 
So I, I would much prefer all my pawns to have assault rifles, but having everyone use heavy SMGs, especially for a period of time is pretty good, but we almost kind of want to optimize around an engagement range of 12 tiles for the heavy SMG. If we're going to do that, we should talk about the light machine gun as well. Light machine gun, you can see 11 damage, which I mean, 11 versus 12 versus 11. It's all pretty much the same, but it fires six bullets at a time. It also fires extraordinarily faster. It's just a huge spray of bullets. It's not terribly accurate, but you know, when you're firing that many bullets, you maybe don't have to be super accurate. I think the LMG is a little bit more expensive to build. I will give a shout out here to the chain shotgun, massive damage, 18 damage per bullet. And it still does a three burst round shot and the same fire rate as the heavy SMG. So this is just 50% more damage per bullet than the heavy SMG, but it's mega short range, right? 13 is the maximum. Um, it has about the same accuracy for throughout. So actually, if we're gonna do a 12 cell engagement range, then we might be better off just using chain shotguns. Wait, are we? We might be. Okay, we'll have to compare costs. This is unlocked. Let me start something new to research. It would be really nice to get geothermal power on because then we have all of our power in all, for, set for a long time. It's very expensive to research. Yeah, I'm gonna get started on geothermal. I might change my mind once I get an advanced research bench if we're not already done, but we're gonna get started on that. Uh, if I take a look at the machining table, yeah, what is the comparable cost to various things? So we're gonna put down a chain shotgun, a heavy SMG, and an LMG in here. Now from here, if you do click on the I, it does show you the construction cost. But just for simplicity, I'm gonna click here. Okay, so heavy SMG needs five components. I don't really care about the steel cost. The work amount does matter uh, a fair bit more, but yeah, five components versus, oh, it's four components for the heavy SMG. It's not as cheap as I thought. And the chain component, a chain shotgun is also five. Okay, I thought the heavy SMG only cost two. And I thought, okay, well, two versus six for the assault rifle, because I think the assault rifle is six, makes them more worthwhile. But now all of a sudden, I'm finding it less sexy. Why wouldn't I just use chain shotguns? I mean, technically they have a SMG can fire further, right? It can fire, it can hit targets up to 13 cells away. It just can't really do a very good op uh, job of it. Um, if we could do some counting here. The other thing you can do is if you grab someone with a weapon, you can see their range uh, by mousing over it. So what's the revolver range? 0.6 tiles. So this is about the range of a heavy SMG. If we put it here and mouse over. Okay, so we could build a battle line back here, let's say. And that's probably 25 tiles to the range over here, but it wouldn't be super accurate. Sorry, Fob, go back to doing whatever you're doing. On the other hand, if we built an engagement range um, at about 12 tiles, so that's 10 here, so that's 12. So if we did this, we did this, that would be 12 tiles to here. 13 to there still within max shotgun range i think that's actually a pretty good early kill box now one of the things you may want to do is actually curve because this is a certain distance here but from a corner it's a little bit further away so you might want to do something like this Cancel, 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 and do something similarly on the other side so that your pawns will be close enough no matter where they hide behind. It's a little bit more annoying to like place them, but it's certainly certainly better defensively. Where's the midpoint? The midpoint's right there. Let's see what we want to do. You still I'm still gonna want to stagger the walls because that does lead to better overall defense. Ideally, what you do is you put your people behind the wall and stand them there. Something like that. I don't think you can fire very well from that spot. Maybe what I do want to do is put walls in these corner spots. No, because that you won't be able to see through there. I had worked out a pattern for this before. 
but apparently I'm not doing a very good job of remembering what that is right now. Yeah, I guess what we do... I wonder if they'll be able... Yeah, I guess they'll be able to fire from there. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. We do that. Maybe I'll do one more like this. We don't have that many people. Barricade, barricade. Okay, that's probably not too shabby for our current defense. Um, we're going to go in and ask for some trees to be cut here again. And then in terms of weapons... I, you know, I'm tempted. I, I, I'm just going to build chain shotguns. Maybe it's dumb. But let's see what happens when we do chain shotguns. Um, I can do the do until X where there's always a stored one. But I think I'm going to do a job of just build me five chain shotguns. I know it's going to be really good for hunting. Oh, maybe they have different penetration stats. That's possible. I hadn't considered that. If we compare the heavy SMG... Hang on a sec. Armor penetration is 14% for the chain shotgun. For the heavy SMG, armor penetration is 18%. So it is a little bit better. So chain shotguns are going to be possibly... It's hard to tell because they do more base damage. But against heavier armored things, the chain shotgun may have a harder time. I'm kind of tempted to build them just, you know, just to mix things up. Let's do it. You know what? This will be my experiment, my learning time. What happens if we standardize and change shotguns? I guess our hunters are going to have to get pretty damn close to things, but they will obliterate them pretty quick. Yeah, I don't know. I think I designed it. I mean, for now, we, we're probably just going to put all the people behind here. I might manually put some people in other places. We shall see. Still, our kill box is enclosed, which is great. Um, let's toggle the power off over here. Power toggling is handled by the basic task, and which is one of the reasons I have it set to one. Because it's very rare that a basic task comes up, but when it happens, you kind of want it to get done right away. All right, so I did that so that our power would stay internally. We still don't have much juice. Oh, okay. We ran into a caravan. Honey ran into a caravan. Um, we definitely don't want to attack them. Luckily, it's a peaceful meeting. We don't have anything to trade. And we don't, yeah, so we'll just move on over here. That might be a caravan that's coming to us, which would be very nice. And I do like that the caravans do get kind of simulated on the world map here. I think that's quite spiffy. This guy having a chill outside, that's okay. Can I build another wind turbine? Did we get solar power? We did. What I'm kind of thinking is that maybe I build another wind turbine here. Because one of the things, I mean, I do like building crops in these areas, but the other thing you can do is put solar generators in these areas because um, they don't block the wind. It kind of makes some sense. Let's do something like that. I think we'll need an extra battery as well. Because... Again, when the wind's not blowing and if it's at night, we're still not getting any power generation. But yeah, let's kick this up because we are adding more and more things that need power. So we are going to want some more power generation. This should hold us for a good long time. I mean, if we get geothermal power, because we did have a geothermal vent somewhere in here, did we not? No, that's right. I remember looking at that last time and there was nothing in the north. It was kind of a little bit annoying and kind of far away. But yeah, we'll get started with this. this is going to be okay. I am thinking about maybe making metal traps over here. Or actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make metal traps up over here. If they reach the front lines, we do want things to die kind of right away. And, um... That's in front of the wall. That's one of that. Um, and they're less likely to reach here. Therefore, we're not going to have to replace these steel traps as often. Now, I might want to extend things over here and over here so that things can't just go around us. Um, to reach. And that actually seems like a relatively reasonable idea. Do that. Um, we've got the graves on the other side. So at some point, we're going to just up, uproot everything and cremate them. But for now, let's do a little something like this. There you go. And I, feel, I think I'll feel pretty good about that. Uh, most likely, the attackers are going to come from here and they're going to get drawn into the steel turrets. If they're melee, they're going to try to run up there as quickly as possible. So I'm not too worried about this gap. I suppose what I could do... 
is just that. I don't even need the, uh, the diagonal there. That is going to work as is. Okay. Maybe worth doing that. Honey's nearly there. But yeah, build those traps. Get that up. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling so much better about our situation now. I don't like that the component count is going down. One of the things we're definitely going to want to do is tech up the fabrication. We do. It's, it's one of those things. Always buy components. You always need more of them. Okay, no wind blowing, but we do have a little bit of sun. We got a deficit now, but at least we had some power stored up. And the extra battery is going to help. Peace talk successful. So you can see we gained 6,000 experience. We did get a big boost in our relations, although they're still hostile. Uh, and it doesn't sound like we got any gifts. So we're going to send Honey back with her new found experience points which didn't really make much of a difference but who knows i mean it's moving her towards the next level so that still counts as something poor fob is gonna have eaten without a table oh such a shame just because there wasn't a table nearby over here there's a maximum range to the tables that people will do to eat so we actually we might want a little secondary dining room somewhere right over here it's not a bad idea because after a raid like when you undraft everyone um, they're probably going to be hungry at that point. So they're probably all going to grab their meal that's in their inventory and eat it. And they'll all get a slight eight without a table debuff. If we put a little, even it can be outdoors, just a little table right here. Um, then they will not have eaten without a table. And we could build a tiny little dining room for them. Um, for now, let's just build a little one by one table. A couple of dining chairs over there. Yeah. That way, people over here... We'll seek out that table. There are mods that increase the range at which your pawns will look for a table, but I don't tend to run them because if someone's over here, I don't necessarily want them to walk all the way over here to eat a meal at the table, then go all the way back to complete whatever job they were doing. If they're too way, too far away from a table, I think it's perfectly fine for them to eat without a table. But if we can keep some tables near them so they don't have to walk very far, hey, bonus. So yeah, actually, you know what? We got a perfect little alcove right here. Let's just do that. Oh, I like that. It's kind of cute. Darcy's got nothing to do. Interesting. Uh, yeah, you don't haul. You do clean, but I guess there's nothing to do. That's right. If you don't have anything to, to hunt or any animal handling, animal handling jobs, you don't really do much. We don't need more meat. I mean, I suppose we could keep hunting just to get the fur in. You do do animal handling. So do we want to try to tame... Well, nothing here, no. We could tame alpacas. Alpacas do produce wool. Um, but I don't think I care that much. If we do get some donkeys, ideally it'd be horses or dromedaries, like camels, um, for, for riding animals for next time we go out and do caravan stuff. I mean, do I want to give you like, no, I mean, there's very little you can actually do. It's like, I could put on a, like a priority four job or something, but no. That's okay though, Darcy. Hell, as the base expands, there's going to be more and more to clean anyway, so you're going to be more and more busy. So Sky does do some... Oh yeah, it's super low priority. I guess it's fine. She might botch it and it's not going to come out the same quality. I could give her some random mining jobs, but... Well, I mean, we did consume some steel. Might not be the dumbest thing in the universe. Uh, actually, what we should do is mine out more components. For a long time, we had lots of components, but I think it might be time for us to do that. Um, that's probably nothing. Uh, mining out the gold... Maybe I won't do that. Gold. There is some things that you need gold to, to manufacture. Ooh, Fob's got a shooting frenzy. Nice. There are some things you need gold to manufacture. Um, you can also use gold as a trading material. Um, of course, just having the gold around does increase the wealth of your colony, which increases, you know, maybe the attack danger. Do you, are we out of power there, or do you just not have a power connection? Oh, you just don't actually have a power connection. Let me do that. Not that that light being on is going to make much of a difference, but we'll see. All right, we got lots of battery power now, and we are getting that during the day. Fob's got nothing to do. Okay, well, tell you what, Fob. We want to make sure, or reduce the chance that we get a huge fire in our stockpile here. So why don't you go and... Well, I guess you had to do the power anyway, but now you'll deconstruct these walls, since you got nothing else going on. And then rebuild them as quick as possible, like this, so that... This storage is fine. I could put some flooring in here too. Just reduce some of the dirt and things. Keep the speed up a little higher. Oh. 
might have deconstructed that power conduit at some point. Like, shouldn't the light be on over here? Bob, I'm going to try to prioritize working on that power conduit. So you can work in the light. Thank you. Now, this stockpile here, this is my preferred weapon stockpile, right? So yeah, we don't have any weapons sitting around right now. We might not have the means to build everything. I don't know. We do have a flak helmet just on the ground right now. Um, there's still some people wearing steel helmets. Ideally, I'd like them to wear the flak helmets if they could. That's the steel helmet. Where's the flak? There it is, right here. Ah, it's only poor quality. It's probably still better. I could force someone to wear it. Or, oh, is everyone... Oh, you got it. It's excellent. It's possible the excellent one is actually better. Let's see here. 58% sharp, just as a means to compare. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, then everyone's good then. And Honey is back. So, I was afraid I was going to forget this, but I miraculously didn't. So, Sky no longer has to be on plant duty. Because Honey's back doing that. She's going to unload her inventory. Just any leftover food she had from doing things. She might be tired, depending on... No, I guess... Uh... Oh, no, she's fairly tired, yeah. I mean, she did rest somewhere along the trip. But not enough. And currently uncomfortable and drowsy, yeah. The comfort levels were low because of not sleeping out in the wild. I could also put down some chairs here so that people who are doing butchering and cooking can uh, accrue a little bit of comfort. Not to mention uh, this machining table. Might not be a bad idea. Are we waiting on a big... Oh, yeah, it's still december -y. Right, we never planted over here because it's never uh, warm enough. Right, a little bit of drug production for money-making. I mean, the smoke leaf is mostly actually going to keep my people a little happier more than anything else. The psychoid's going to be for money-making. We'll turn into... I think flake is a better profit thing than yayo. I think it's pretty similar, though. Okay, good. More cotton. I was going to say, that's not going to be enough cotton to keep us going. Two cotton places and a little bit of devil strand. Uh, oh, right. The devil strand's on mostly the fertile terrain because it's going to need a little bit of extra love. Okay, good. Because um, cloth, I, you can make, a, I mean, you can make any clothing out of leather. You can also, a little starter because I was thinking of our of our comfy little armchairs over here. Um, but yeah, we, we don't have a ton of material. Technically, we could make one out of plain leather, which wouldn't be bad because plain leather is actually pretty crap as a clothing material. How much is a armchair? 110? Yeah, you know what? I will go and use the plain leather. Light leather is even worse. Um, let's put it here for now. We'll get that started. So Fob should work on that tile. Can you work on it while someone's here? Yeah, I'm not sure that you can. Okay, I do have to put a cut in here. I am thinking about flooring this room. It doesn't have to be pretty. Could just make out of concrete. It's just, you know, movement speed and things. Um, we have a lot of marble blocks. I suppose I could just make things out of marble. We do have access to a lot of metal across my... You know, let's just keep going with marble floors. What the heck, right? Um, marble tile. And we'll cover the doors as well. That's going to be okay. All right. Let's uh, let's reset fob here. Let the construction job start. We're going to go and put a cut in here. And next episode, well, again, feeling a little bit better about our defenses. We, can, we do need to remember to flick this on. We got some extra power for these things as well. Uh, which, because, yeah, when we're running that... It, there, it is going to suck more juice out of the grid. And if there's no wind and it's during the night, we'll definitely be happy that we've got the extra batteries to run those. Food situation complete continues to be stable. I don't remember. Do we have auto slaughter set up for our cows? We do. And we might be able to grow this herd a little bit more. You know, you know I think... Well, we only have, yeah, it, it's it's already still growing. We haven't reached our, our slaughter target yet as is. So, okay, let's not worry about that. Uh, we can make a decision there later. I should move these rocks out of this area. I guess I don't care about these so much. They can stay there. But yeah, let's clear out the pen. And yeah, a growing season is coming soon. And that's going to be really nice to improve our cloth works. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.